Hey folks, welcome back to another top five list with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today I'm going to be talking about my top five games that are going to be at Eschenspiel 2016 that I've already played and I think you need to go uh, buy, or at the very least check out to see if you would possibly buy it. Uh, now I am going to have some uh, honorable mentions that didn't quite make the top five uh, for a number of different reasons, but I'll go over those in just a few moments. So hey, let's get to it. Now my three honorable mentions are quite simple. The first one is called Diamant. Now it is being put out by Yellow and this is actually a reprint from a much older game, one that has been reprinted once as um, ink and gold, and now it's being reproduced again by Yellow with Yellow's signature artwork, apparently, uh, and it's going to be called Diamant, going back to its original uh, name. And this is a game that I've played. I love it. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, the only thing is, is that I haven't actually played this specific version of it. I've just played the game before, and it is only a reprint. So I, I can, I think I can attest to the game's play value and how much fun it is. And with Yellow's track record for um, artwork and putting out quality components and uh, just a quality game, uh, I. I'm, I'm, I feel very safe and comfortable backing this uh, without having seen it. So at the very least, go give that one a try uh, and, and demo it. And But I think you'll, you'll probably like it enough to go ahead and give it a purchase. The second one is one that, that uh, me and the guys at the Dice Tower have only played a prototype version of. But if, <laughs> I mean, again, we're talking about yellow here and it's Oceanos. Um, great artwork. Uh, if it's any, I mean, if... <laughs> If it's as good as the prototype, which it more than likely will be, yeah, we're, we're talking great artwork, but I can't vouch for any of the components because, again, we've only seen the prototype version of it. But this is a game that is really fun to play, and uh, we've had a great time playing it as well. So that's Oceanos uh, from Yellow. Go check that out at least. And then there's another one from a company called Triton Noir called V Commandos. And V Commandos is a neat uh, cooperative World War II game where stealth is key. You don't want to necessarily, necessarily go in just guns blazing like a lot of the World War II games are that are, per, uh, that are put out. Uh, this one, uh, you want to be stealthy. You want to sneak around. You want to stay hidden as much as possible within the game and that might sound easy but it isn't um, and um, it's very a very good game very enjoyable um, so I would definitely give that a try V Commandos from Triton Noir now they've already just finished a uh, Kickstarter for that and it funded and the Kickstarters are going to be getting uh, their copies of the game uh, I believe uh, this in and around Essen and then uh, the major release is going to be for January 2017. Is that At least that's what I've read so far. So go check that out at Essen. I think you'll probably want to go ahead and purchase it if you're at all interested in that kind of World War II combat stealthy kind of game. So those are my three honorable mentions. Let's get to the top five. Now, my top five are games that I have played and really enjoyed. I've played them multiple times and I've enjoyed them every single time that I've played them. Uh, but they simply have come out already at other conventions and I've been able to get my hands on them. And, and I know that you'll enjoy these if your tastes are at all like mine. Uh, even if they aren't, some of these will probably hit your fancy. So my number five is a game called Ice Cool from Brain Games. And it's a neat little game where um, each of the players are taking on the roles of different penguins in a high school for penguins. And uh, some of the penguins are simply hungry and they want to go get a snack. They're going to ditch class in order to go get a snack. And there's going to be one penguin who is the hall monitor. And if he catches all of the different penguins that are cut in class, well, then uh, he actually gets a lot of points and the penguins get points for the, the snacks or the fish that they were able to uh, collect 
before uh, getting caught by the hall monitor. And uh, basically you play it to where everybody has the chance to be the hall monitor and whoever has the most points at the end of those rounds is the winner. But it's a really neat flicking mechanism game where the, the design of the penguins is really cool because you can get them to do turns and curves and uh, you can actually get them to jump and, and just depending on how you flick at the little uh, penguin. And so I, I just really love this game and it's a game that I can play with uh, my entire family, including my five-year-old, and we all have a blast. So that's Ice Cool, my number five. My number four is a game from Backspindle Games, and it's also being put out by Ninja Division here in the States, and it's called Kodinka. Kodinka is an abstract strategy game that uses these big light uh, little tiles that are very, very well designed and very sturdy. And uh, basically, it's a it's a two to four player game, and you can you can play just as cutthroat as you possibly can, but basically you're trying to uh, flip over tiles and get um, and, and, and move them around and get them in different patterns on the board uh, so that you can score these secret goal or objective cards that you have in your hand. And basically the goals and objective cards are simply different patterns that you're trying to get your pieces into on the playing surface. Uh, it's really neat, um, a little just on the cusp of being a little bit brain burning, but I enjoy it and I don't really like brain burning games. So uh, it's a cool abstract game, one that I highly enjoy and uh, think that you should go check out at the very least and you'll probably want to pick it up as well. Kodinka from Backspindle Games. My number three is a game that I was just introduced to at Gen Con 2016 up in Indianapolis and it is from Passport Studios and it is called Mythe. M-Y-T-H-E, it's like mice with a list. It's a really cool game. First of all, it has a pop-up board. That was rare, <laughs> very cool. I just don't remember seeing that. Brought back a lot of nostalgia of those pop-up uh, reading books that my, my mom and my grandma used to read to me all the time when I was a kid. Uh, I loved those things. Just loved playing with them even before I could read. So the idea uh, behind that is cool in and of itself. But the gameplay is also really neat too because you have a hand of cards, but you can't play your cards. You have to randomly pick cards to play from other people's hands. And then once you've played those cards, you put them all back up into your hand and then you have to give some of those cards away to the other players so that everybody has at least one card in their hand at the end of each turn. Uh, so basically, it's a push your luck game where you're trying to get your warrior knight mouse uh, to the red dragon and defeat him to bring back the sacred cheese to your village. Uh, so it's a really neat game, really fun, easy to play, uh, but has a lot of really cool, tough decisions in it as well. That's Mythe from Passport Studios, my number three. My number two is a game that has kind of flown under the radar from uh, Blue Cocker Games games and it is a game that I've done a review on. I believe Tom also did a review on it and we both liked it a lot uh, and it's called Meeple War. It's a pretty neat uh, delayed timing system where you are uh, building mechs and using those mechs to go out and uh, use uh, area control and use these different uh, powers that the different places that you are controlling will give you in order to score enough points to in order to win the game. Uh, it's a really neat mechanism. I was blown away with it uh, way back when, and I still think that it is one of those games that you should make a beeline for, if at all possible. So that's Meeple War, my number two from Blue Cocker Games. And my number one is from Matago, and it is a game that I have really enjoyed. My boys asked me to play this on a regular basis and uh, it's called Inish. It is an area control game, but it's also a hand management game and it's also a card drafting game and it's also a uh, dudes on the board kind of game. Um, but the th cool thing about it is that there are basically three different um, winning conditions that you have to meet in order to win the game. Now you don't have to meet all three of them, you just have to meet one at least and be the one who is the only person to do that. If there are two people that are trying to accomplish only one goal, then the person who is the Bryn or the, the leader, the chieftain, uh, will be the person who wins and ties. But it's a neat 
Area Control game has a beautiful board, beautiful artwork, uh, really good miniatures, nice components, a lot of good things going on for this one. I think Matago hit this one out of the park. I like it a lot. And that is Inish from Matago, my number one game that you need to, at the very, very least, go and check out at Essen 2016. But I highly recommend all five of these games and would recommend that you pick it up if at all possible, and if you like games like I like games. So those are my top five games that I've already played that will be at Eschenspiel 2016 here in just a couple of weeks. And so go check them out. We'll see you guys on the flip side. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.